This is Jerry Mischewski, Balance Community Slackline Outfitters. And uh, today we're going to be talking about tape spacing as a continuation on our tape article series. Uh, let's jump right into it. All right, so we have a, a mock high line here rigged with a double arrow. It's about 50-ish feet long. Um, and so as we all know, um, backup lines on high lines, they serve two purposes. One, as a backup to the main line if something were to fail. And two, as a walking aid. Um, and the walking aid functionality of the backup re relies quite a bit on the spacing of your tapes. So here in this, on this high line, we have very regular tape spacings. They're all evenly spaced between each tape. And it's using a main affixed sliders, main sliders as I like to call them. Uh, as you can see, the backup slides right through. So now, if we give this line a shake, we're gonna notice something. Because of the regular tape spacings, it causes a, a sort of uh, regular swing to happen, which is not good for, for stabilizing purposes. That means when you're walking the line and you send a shake into the line, it's gonna come back pretty strong because all these loops are kind of exacerbating that movement that you've sent into the line. Now, if we watch what happens, if I remove a tape, just one tape from the middle, So now if we look at the line with one tape removed such that there's a single loop that is not the same size as the rest, that same movement, there's no exacerbation of, of the movement in the line. We have the, the two different size loops moving in different oscillations causing themselves to cancel out. And so that's an important um, note to make is uneven tape spacings increases the stability of the line. And so when you're taping your high line, make sure you're doing random spacings. But that brings me to my next point, the size of your spacings. That also makes a big difference in the stability and walkability of your high lines. This example, we have about a five or six, about five and a half, six foot tape spacings, about 1.5 to 1.8 meters between each space. For this length line, I find that that's a good, happy medium. Because with this tape spacing, you don't have much potential for the line to wrap around, which is a dangerous thing we've seen in, in high lines when the two, when the backup wraps around the main, because it causes friction at the at the points that it's touching the main line. So that's a that's a good thing. But you also don't want too large of a tape spacing, because when that happens and you're walking the line. Sometimes when you're stepping on the main line, the backup can ride up against your ankles, which is very uncomfortable and very distracting and potentially dangerous when you're walking the high line. But then again, the thing about tape spacing is when you have a larger tape spacing, you can have less tension on the backup and still get that stabilizing effect of the backup loops. So what's causing this, the, the backup loops to, to stabilize the line is the fact that they're hanging below the main line. It's acting as a counterweight when you're walking the line. If, it, if it's up tied up against the line, as we can see here, if I tension this up and then give it another shake, it moves quite a bit more than if I add slack to the backup, it stabilizes. But with a small loop, it requires quite a bit more slack to be out for there to be that nice distance between the, the loop and the main line, which is what's giving you that stabilizing effect. For example, if I need, I don't know, four inches or 100 millimeters of, of distance between the two, comparing this single space spacing here to this double, I can pull in quite a bit more slack to get that same distance between the two lines. And that's, that's a good thing to know for, for high lines that are lower to the ground. Increase your tape spacing so that you can add more tension to the backup and still have a stabilizing effect. But don't go too big such that the backup's rising up on your leg when you're walking the line. 
I find two to four full arm spans for big lines over 100 meters and one to three spacing for, for lines under uh, 100 meters. It's, it's a good happy medium. For this length, I wouldn't go much more than two arm, arm lengths, which would be two tape spacings here, two arm lengths there. But vary it up in the, in the distance. Do a single tape spacing, a, sing, a single arm span, sorry, single arm span, then two arm spans, and one and a half arm spans, and one arm span, and then two. Make it random spacing to get that stabilizing effect of uneven loops. And also <coughs> make sure you don't go too big or too small such that you can keep back up fairly tight and still get that stabilizing effect of the hanging back up loop. And then furthermore, last, last fun little tip here with the spacing is on the long high line where you plan on spending some time in the middle, maybe you're gonna do some bounce tricks or I don't know, surfing or whatever, do fairly large, typical two to four arm span tape spacings for the beginning and the end. But in the center, where you're gonna be spending the most time, do single arm span or even less, half an arm span for a number of tapes so that you have a good solid section of the line where it's really tightly tape spaced and you don't have any issues with interacting with the backup when you're doing your tricks or your bounces or your surfs. I like to call that the trick zone on a high line. It's phenomenal because you still get that stabilizing effect of uneven large backup loops, but you have a really solid s seemingly single line in the middle, which is the best of both worlds that I've, that I've found. Uh, that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about with tape spacings. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below here or on the article, and then make sure you check out the article that's linked in the description. There's a full write-up about all this stuff, plus a few other items that I likely missed in this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, I'm Jerry Mischewski with Balance Community, and make sure you check out our website, balancecommunity.com.